down because we're, let's say, slowly moving to the final part of our session about Mobile Moyo. And I would like to invite here also Keith and uh, Andrei from, uh, yes, uh, I see him, Andrei Tikhanov from Samsung. Uh, so, uh, yes, and I would ask uh, one more microphone here to, for us, if it's possible, yeah. Please take a seat uh, where you would like, yeah? Okay, cool. Um, so I would say that this is kind of like a summary of what we saw right now, and uh, actually, uh, yeah, I think we can give that to Andre. That would be much more easy. Um, so uh, it's kind of like a summary uh, for what we heard, and uh, some kind of like a, let's say, vision to the future. Uh, first of all, I w uh, we are planning to talk about uh, um, wearing compute, um, wearable computing and also about other innovations. But first, I would like, um, yes, please, here. I would like uh, to ask Andrei to introduce himself briefly. Uh, what you do, uh, what is your passion, and then we can continue with our discussion because other guests already uh, presented something on the stage. Good, thank you. Uh, first of all, you know, I think that, you know, I've, I've been invited for a sort of a kicks um, into the session because uh, I'm a very corporate animal, right? I spent 18 years in IBM, now I joined Samsung and I'm in charge of the enterprise business team. Uh, as a part of my responsibilities, I'm uh, working on launching the mobility platform for enterprise mobility. And uh, this is one of the most exciting endeavors, you know, I've been to. Uh, so in Samsung, you know, I'm launching, you know, the otherwise known Samsung, you know, B2C portfolio into the B2B space, and that is in itself, you know, like, you know, uh, getting, you know, the excellent product and uh, attaching a new business model into this. So, uh, if you like, you know, I'm a sort of, you know, rather an expert in business models. Now, uh, previously, you know, being an IBM, I've been very much, you know, affiliated, you know, to the venture community and uh, heavily participating in this and launching the smart camp and many other things. Uh, and this is why, you know, talking about the new technologies, you know, is, very, is, is a very exciting thing to do. Now, uh, I, I really, you know, enjoy the pitch, you know, regarding NFC. I think that, you know, this is the thing to expand on, uh, upon. There are many other items, you know, that, you know, we can, uh, we can talk about, you know, talk through, you know, and that, you know, that would be a very good thing, you know, to talk through the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, really interesting to, to know your background. So now we can see that here we have very great specialists from Asia, US and Russia, uh, where you can really have a very good overview. And my question is quite simple for the beginning. So um, everybody here, do you know what is Google Glass? Who knows what is Google Glass? Okay, cool. That's great. Uh, who, now, who wants one? Who yeah, wants who one? wants one? That's the thing. Who the really second. doesn't want one? Okay. <laughs> then we will have a very short video right now to have very clear understanding what we're actually talking about. Please, video on the stage. Here are the basics of how to use glass. This is your touchpad. It runs from your temple to your ear. Tap the touchpad to wake up glass. You should see the display above your line of sight, adjusted to see everything. The home screen shows a clock. This is your timeline. It's a row of cards. Things to the left are happening now or coming up, like the weather, an upcoming flight, or an event in your calendar. You can tap on any card to see more. Swipe down anywhere to go back to the timeline. Cards to the right of the home screen are from the past. For example, messages, videos, or photos. Tap on a photo to share it and choose one of your friends. Swipe down to go back to standby and have fun exploring. This is the Google Glass. And my first question to uh, our experts, could you tell me please, what is that? Is this is the future of uh, wearable computing or it's just a geeky cool thing which nobody cares about and will play for a while? What is that? Who would like to start? Well, I think it's both, right? Okay. Okay, it's a geeky thing, right? And it's both the future. So 
I think that, uh, you know, first of all, you know, it all starts, you know, like a technology and ends up in, in a distinctive market. So, and I think that, you know, like it has, you know, each and every endeavor, you know, has its stages, you know, so for now that would be a stage of establishment. You know, those things, you know, we already saw in, in a couple of movies, I believe, right? But, uh, you know, turning this into a platform, you know, this is where it gets boring, right? Now, um, I think that, you know, uh, you know it, entering the market is only as good as, you know, making this a platform, you know, the platform of choice and this sort of thing. So, for a while, you know, indeed it will become, but then, you know, as the, as the stack of application on top of this thing, you know, would arise, then it turns into the market. And I think, well, you know, I think Google proven, has proven to the world that they are able, you know, to make up the platform, you know, so, you know, there's another one. Okay. Somebody else? So, so the, you know, the way I think about platforms is uh, it, a good comparison is, you know, the five-year plans during the Soviet Union period uh, that Stalin did, which was, you know, we build, a, we know exactly what we're going to build, we're going to build it like this, and after five years we will have built it, and then we'll have another five years. This kind of top-down platform planning, that isn't the world we live in anymore. Platforms actually emerge spontaneously, largely from consumers, actually. So Instagram really began as an app but became a platform. Now it's a key platform within the Facebook world. It's the photo sharing platform, for, and not just for Facebook, it goes beyond that. And, and, and it wasn't envisaged to be a platform. So Google Glass really depends on what it becomes. Now, we all know Sergey, of course, is Russian. This is Sergey's project. Sergey's crazy. We all know that, okay? He's kind of totally crazy. It's kind of like, you know, crazy. Russian crazy, that's like a conclusion, you know, he, a line. <laughs> he's crazy in a good way, but he really believes people are going to look you in the eye whilst doing this. You know, it's like you're talking to someone whilst doing this. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. But I do think wearable computing with the ability to hear, to video, to listen, uh, to watch will happen. But the form it will take, uh, I don't think it's probably Google Glass, but if it wasn't for Google Glass, we wouldn't learn what the form will be that it will take. So it's a great thing that he's doing, it's a fantastic thing, but it probably is just, uh, for me, it's just uh, the first experiment in, in, in going, you know, he makes a joke, he says, okay, well this is weird, but this is even weirder and more rude. I mean, if I'm having dinner with uh, Daria, if her husband will let me, um, and I go like this, it's really rude. And he says, you know, this is less rude, but it's still pretty weird. That's the question, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> okay, okay, could you tell us, please, because what I heard is also that you have kind of like a prototype of some kind of like Google Glass, uh, Glass in, in Japan also, so let us know. Yes, um, I totally agree with Keith, and um, I think it's still early days to to, to figure out whether it's relevant to us or not. And, um, and, and at the same time, I think um, Google or Google Glass needs a competitor in order to justify its presence um, or its existence in the market itself too. So that's why uh, one, of the, um, one of the more famous entrepreneurs in Japan, his name is Takahito Iguchi. Um, he's the father of the um, augmented reality um, app called Sekai Camera from Japan. Uh, he just came up with a new venture called te Telepathy. So he is now um, coming up with his own version of Google Glass. But then again, I don't see the business model yet. And I think um, I do agree with Keith in saying that um, unless we see something out there in the market where um, people could have a third eye view and say, well, it's going to work or not, it's not going to make sense for business um, in the short term. So I think uh, for me personally, too, it, it, it's just. It's just me willing to pay 1500 US dollars and say, well, I may like it or not. If I don't like it, I'll put it on um, something auctions or something and have every, you know, anybody else uh, buy it from me. But it, it's still early to say, I think. Okay, thank you. Now we have, let's say, uh, opportunity for a couple of questions from the audience, if there are any uh, regarding uh, previous presentations or regarding our discussion. Seems there is one. A uh, person behind, if we could, uh, yeah, and here. Uh, Ola, is it possible for you to help us, please? We have a microphone here, or here, yeah, that one would be transparent. Yeah, uh, just two questions. So the first person was uh, in the red shirt. Please introduce yourself. 
And then, Leonid, you will be the second one because you were very quickly. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm from a company called Parallels. I have a question for uh, Keith uh, regarding the mobile messaging. Uh, great presentation, by the way, thank you. Uh, what do you think about uh, BlackBerry uh, Messenger going outside of the limits of the BlackBerry platform for iOS and Android this summer? Uh, do we really need another messaging platform in terms of uh, mobile messaging? Well, the first thing is I, I think mobile messaging is like um, a six-month-old baby. It, it, mobile messaging is in its infancy and it's very... Um, you know, the features of mobile messaging are evolving. It wasn't too long ago that mobile messaging meant text. Now, with most of the apps, you can put pictures into your chat uh, or even videos, but it's still a chat. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't include the features of email, for example, or more richer, enduring styles of messaging. It's just uh, temporary messaging that you can only do in instant messaging. So messaging is in its infancy. It's very young. And I don't, so, so will the, the real question is, will the current messaging companies evolve to embrace human features? And I, I, I think of uh, BlackBerry as uh, a hardware company with good software. So I, I was a little surprised that they today announced that they're gonna be releasing the BBM for iOS and for, um, and, and for Android because they make their money from selling hardware. So if they're successful, it just gives another reason not to buy a BlackBerry. I don't quite understand what they're thinking, to be honest. Having said that, I think their software is better than WhatsApp. It's better than Line. It's more fully featured. Um, it relates to the alerts and notifications are, are, are very well done on their platform. So maybe they think they can evolve into a services company. Maybe that's behind the thinking. I would like to think that um, the, the next generation of, um, I call them human apps really more than messaging apps, because we humans, we do all kinds of things. You know, Why is Evernote so popular? Because we save things. Why is messaging so popular? Because we want to talk to people. Why is email so popular? Because we have longer conversations. You know, uh, wh Why is social networking so popular? Because we like discovering new people and new things. And human beings have all three dimensions, and most software only addresses one of them at the best. They address one. I think the evolution is moving more. BBM is the closest, actually, to integrating some of those things into a single experience. It's, it's actually quite good at that. And uh, I think that is the future, which is why um, you can all, if you have an iPhone, download Just Me, because that's exactly the same vision. And I hope uh, BBM fails, because then Just Me can <laughs> succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. And we have a very short question from Leonid because he was very quickly one. <laughs> okay, please introduce I'll yourself. Try to do yes. it in, in Twitter style. Leonid Bugai, author of uh, Mobile Marketing Book. What's your point of view of the next big breakthrough on compact energy? I mean, for wearable devices, we need compact energy, which gives us a uh, full day cycle to to use this product, for example, as a Google Glass. What's the what's next big breakthrough in this? Maybe Samsung can, can answer us. I don't know. Please, Samsung. <laughs> Since you have a very good friendship with Google. You just discovered the big problem with everything. <laughs> Well, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, I would be able, you know, to comment, you know, from the Samsung side, but, you know, on the top of my head, you know, the, the thing on energy storage, this is a very hot area. I, you know, I've heard something about you know the lithium air is being you know uh, emerging and as, as a new promising technology. But I, you know, I think that you know this is you know the current technology allows us you know to uh, to increase the energy storage as we go. I don't know whether there is an immortal or in this space, but you know I, I find you know as a, as an end user you know these devices, I find you know, themselves you know more and more you know resilient you know and more you know storing more and more energy. I think that you know. Yes, you're right. You know that uh, that might jump into, into the platform, into the wide use only if, if you can use this all day long, right? Because you know, otherwise, you know, half a day, you know, wouldn't suit you well, right? You know. Uh, so for me, I believe that you know we'll, we will be witnessing a, con a consistent uh, increase in energy storage as we go, and then there will be several technology 
you know, like Liti Air, you know, to name and you know, uh, Liti and I, you know, to to make a few. And I know that there are there is intense research, including Russia. There are several companies doing this. You know, that includes you know, like IBM. That includes Bosch. That includes several others. You know, that are very much focusing on this space. And the estimation of the yield, you know, from this, you know, research is around in the range of three to five years. I have one more very short question to you, Andrea, also, because I'm very curious. Uh, in terms of Google Glass, um, do you think it's like it's a wowed product? And for example, if somebody like Samsung will create a, a refrigerator which is ordering your uh, food directly to home and deliver it, and, uh, let's say, make it in a very smart way, that people will also act like they acting at the Google Glass right now, like wow product? Or what, what do you think on, in this case? I, I think that you know the principle that we need to follow in, every, in, in everyday use is that you know we should be both visionary and practical, right? Okay, I wouldn't be buying a fridge, you know, that would be buying you know myself goods, you know, like you know. Uh, so dangerous. I, 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 I'm not so sure, right? Okay. Um, uh, that is not you know the kind of shopping you know that I'm utmost like, but you know. Anyway. So. But, however, you know, if there is a, you know, like, you know, any sort of emotional or the price tag attacked, you know, into this choice, right, then it becomes, you know, either visionary or practical, right, so there is a ground for making that such type of choice, right. If we're talking electricity, for instance, you know, that is in the next, you know, that is a sort of previous step. Uh, in U.S., you know, everybody makes the laundry during the night time, right, you know, why, you know, the energy is cheaper during the night time. If that, if that fridge, okay, would make up this choice for me, okay, shopping during night time or, or something like this, you know, I think that, you know, that qualifies already for some value attached to this, right? So, the first thing, you know, we need to question ourselves, if there is any value attached, you know, to, to this choice, right, either emotional or, you know, money, in, in money terms, you know, then, then we would be able to make a choice. Okay, thank you very much. But I think we saw the choice of the audience when we asked if they would like to buy a Google Glass. Uh, then uh, they, they said, majority of people said yes. Unfortunately, we are out of the time, but all speakers who will be here a bit more, so you will be able to talk with them directly. Please, uh, applause for our guests, for our great speakers.